Now entering the Bitcoin Podcast Network. We've got a sponsor for you this week. This week's episode is sponsored by Status. The Status app lets you chat, browse, and transact on the Ethereum blockchain. Take control of your own private secure messaging, use dApps on mobile, and secure your assets. Download the app today where you get your mobile apps or at statusim slash get. That's statusim slash G-E-T. The Bitcoin podcast will also be in the TBP channel of the Status app to give out a little s and and let you play around with its features and start chatting privately today. Enjoy the show. It's a Bitcoin podcast. The only one that's making your money is you. So hold on. What's up, everyone? Welcome to another week of the Bitcoin Podcast. Um, this is episode 302. We're 98 episodes away from 400. That almost means there. Nothing. We're almost there. Um, almost there. We're almost, we'll be, we'll be there, what, t- almost two years out. Um, yeah, I guess so. Unless we just go on a rampage. Like, did we ever, I feel like. In the past, no. we went on a rampage and just did a lot of episodes in a short amount of time. We used to do like we do like we did like three a week. We did for a couple a weeks. Couple times. We did that like twice. We, I don't know we what we were thinking. Two, we must have had no responsibility. Week. We had very little responsibility. Uh, that's not true. We were just different, different life, different structure. You were you were a scientist at the time, and I was a teacher, and um, Cello was. I think he was a graphic designer. I'm not he too was sure. freelancing something that was really, really laid back. Yeah, but nevertheless, uh, episode 302. I'm the host that talks first, D. I'm another host, Dr. Corey Petty. Yeah, Corey talks second. Sometimes. And then, uh, yeah, <laughs> you just don't want to say the, the tagline. I'm trying to get him to say the tagline. I've, I've, I have refused to say that tagline ever since you started Why? saying, I don't know, because it's fun. What's wrong with the tagline? My tagline is I'm another host. You do your tagline. I'll do my tagline. Fine. We don't have a guest host this week. Um, but we did have an interview with Wasabi Wallet. And let me tell you about this interview. You're going to be on the edge of your seat. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, in terms of projects in the space, they're like one of the larger ones in terms of most important in the Bitcoin yeah. ecosystem. There's a lot of news we should be talking about, but because we're us, we're just going to ignore it. So like the U.S. digital wallet and digital dollar. Oh, uh, I guess from what I had heard or from what I had read as of recent, um, the recent setting, I think this was as, as of Thursday, I was looking through the U.S. government like bills, right? Mm-hmm. Um. And the last iteration of whatever the stimulus package was that they're pushing through did not include the, the digital dollar. Mm. So, so that was um, all headlines. It used to. I think someone tried to tack it in there. I'm sure there's a bunch mm. of other shit that got tacked in there that wasn't supposed to be there. Um, I don't think that one made it. So that digital dollar um, hubbub is potentially just not an issue right now. I'd have to check the what you know actually went through, but from what I could tell, what... When I, as as of Thursday, it wasn't in there. It got removed. Mm. You know how fast we fall into dystopia when that when that goes live. I it's mean, going to be like I don't think that's what's going to be the downfall. I'm pretty sure it's going to be the myriad of other things in the United yeah. States. In my my opinion, yeah. my opinion, we're not a world power after this. That's what I think. Of COVID, 
Yeah. 19. That's my, that's oh, yeah. my, that's my personal, uh, unprompted, uneducated opinion on what's going to happen after all this is. I would say we're not the world power. Yeah. We are a world power. We're not, we're not the world power. Yeah. After this, that's my, that's my personal uneducated opinion on this. Yep. I, I'm right there with you. So if you're in the U S and you're listening to this strap on <laughs> strap that's in, not a sex joke strap in maybe. No, strap on to something. <laughs> Just hold, hold on tight. Hold on to your butts. As good, yeah. the great, late, still alive Samuel L. Jackson once said in a Jurassic Park movie. Um. Anyway, so other than talking about that news, which I thought the the digital was just going to be USDC, but uh, never no, mind. It's it's it's. So like I did some research on this a little bit and just I guess before we yeah. move on here it's it's modeled after um it seems to be from any information that I could find online which is sparse modeled after the um I think it's like forget the acronym but it's basically like centrally central government digital currency or digital like government backed government backed digital currency or some shit like that um, it's modeled after the, the, the Bahama, the Bahama buck or Bahama sand dollars, what it's called. Um, mm. So the Bahamas introduced a digital currency and it's currently in circulation and being used. Uh, there's a lot of stipulations on how much an individual can use around it. And there are digital wallets, but um, it's modeled after that. And which seems to be modeled after Stellar. So hard to call it a this blockchain. Terrible. Well, this is terrible. Stellar does I hate a that I'm always right. pretty good job in terms of payments, simple payments that, that, that seem to scale. I don't know anything about like permissionlessness, ability to manipulate and control. If we look if because Stellar's modeled after Ripple, we can see that it's easy to manipulate and control because Ripple is basically manipulated and controlled by um, Ripple. Uh but for a government-backed fiat currency, isn't that exactly what they want? Yeah, I know. It's terrible. My problem, my only concern, my main concern with things like that, um, outside of like surveillance and manipulation uh, by the government, is is like security of people's funds and then people putting a lot of investment and time into um, using this type of thing because it buys their groceries or pays their taxes or whatever. And it's hacked or broken. That's the main thing, because that 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 makes economies fall. If if government has full control over it, sure, they already have full control over fiat. This may make it more efficient to allow them to do it better. My worry is it was when someone breaks it, or it breaks itself, and everything that you every, every the amount of value you throw into it just goes away, which then breaks mm-hmm. economies, as opposed to like government being government and doing fuckery. Hmm. I'm willing to bet that's already happened a boatload of times behind the scenes in the current system. It's just that we don't get to see it. Maybe. Okay. And when it when it does happen, they'll like switch to a backup network or something or, or show everybody fake numbers until they get it sorted out. But there's no way, given how shitty the internet is patchwork together that that hasn't happened in the background. And we're just like, Oh shit. And somebody who, who like has the authority is probably like, Oh shit, give them last hours numbers and let's fix it real quick. And then let's put it back together. Like that has to have happened. I know it's happened. Your, I don't need like your a inner gut feels that it has happened. Shit breaks down, bro. I just know like living on the planet, working jobs, doing seeing lots of shit shit breaks shit doesn't go as planned and you're like well here is the contingency and i'm willing to bet that our current banking system that is heavily dependent upon the internet that's broken down or they've been hacked or something has happened but if you let people know what's the chaos that ensues you know so you just i'm not gonna say it's a it's a it's a (laughs) it's a terrible thing that you're saying and it's 100 wrong i'm not gonna say that (laughs) <laughs> There's no evidence to say that it has happened, but I mm. maybe there is. I haven't looked at it. So, um, 
back to reality, right? We got this. We got this. We got this fucking crypto. We got this coin. It's fucking called Ether. Everybody loves this shit. Price is going up, going down. One minute is one hundred seventy dollars. The next is one hundred twenty. You know, one 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 year it's three hundred dollars or twelve hundred. Next year it's not. It's Ethereum. Everybody knows about Ethereum. You like Ethereum. I like Ethereum. Uh, but it's a fucking bananas shit show. And what I mean by that is that it's it's proposal to be the virtual machine of the planet is dope. But it seems like so hard. Because of last week's discussion, we had Taylor on. We, we were talking about something um, that's either awesome or not. And that is, you know, anybody can make a smart contract. And it could seem benign. But when it interacts with another smart contract, all hell breaks loose. And we've seen that a few times, I think, in, in Ethereum's history. And so when you have that kind of in determinate, unpredictable, massively variable amount of interactions that can occur between seemingly benign smart contracts, how could Ethereum ever hope to have the level of stability that people could, you know, be comfortable with using it? Uh, my opinion, the same way that companies and businesses and viable things uh, gain confidence and security around the internet, right? Like, like, it's not like businesses threw their entire business on the internet and it worked every time from the beginning. Uh, it comes with it comes with experience and better standards and better understanding and better um, wisdom around um, risk modeling and threat modeling. Like if you if you listen to the conversation we had last week, mm-hmm. you'll realize that um, because the introduction because of the introduction of new smart contract capabilities that kind of interoperate with other platforms. It wasn't the platform that changed. Um, it was that it was their risk assessment and the assumptions they were, they were, they were, they were making about what was a feasible way, what was, what was feasible for an attacker or person to do. And when you build something, you build it under a given set of assumptions based on how people use that platform at that time. Right. Like based on how, what we've seen in the past and what we can think about within our wisdom in the future, we're assuming that the average or the, the, the user will only be able to do these things. And that means we're probably okay with any type of threat or risk that's outside of the scope of those assumptions. And what happens with a platform like Ethereum or the internet or any type of like fastly moving technology is what the average user is capable of doing changes rapidly. And if you're not on top of making sure your assumptions and what your threat model is, if you're not on top of how that changes with the current landscape, then you're going to fail. And that happens with any fast moving technology, especially especially when you have when when like your funds like your economy is attached to that technology like it is with a lot of businesses who run on ethereum and so it just moves forward like it would with other technology in fact i think it moves forward better and faster precisely because all of your value is captured and and, and inexorably tied to that technology like you're more willing to look at your threat model and what risk you have with the things you're, you're, you're using of that platform because it's obvious that your value is associated with it. Whereas as opposed to the internet, like a lot of the, the, the damage that's done with being hacked is things you don't necessarily think about until after it's done. Like losing all of your users, losing your social clout, um, like 
dropping your database, which like which like ruins a lot of uh, specific pipelines or history or anything like that. Like that's not ex- explicitly money. That's implicitly money through time and effort and lost ability to follow up on things. Whereas like if it's if it's money, if it's value and tokens and stuff like that, it's just gone. And it's it's so you're you're more willing to like keep track of these things. But because we're so early, in my opinion, like we haven't built the standards and wisdom and tools to allow people to do appropriate threat modeling or risk assessment or track these things. Yeah. I think that overall, the people that are building in crypto now, um, it's just too much ADD. It's just like every year there's a new hot thing. And it's like, I get it. That's cute. That's the way, that's the way that the tech, uh, I guess the tech sector uh, got its claim to fame is, is move fast and break things and don't apologize and make cool, cute shit and cats. Yeah, yeah I'd say that's true. And we're all tech, we're all tech enthusiasts, right? And at a certain, yeah. And at a certain point it's like, Hey, don't stop doing that fucking dumb shit. Like people with this stuff with money and with something that could be as valuable as a global virtual machine. Stop it. Stop, stop doing the dumb shit. Focus on core infrastructure as an entire community. And then those people that have the affinity to do the cool nifty shit with cats and weird games, then bring them back in. Bring, hey, come on, come back into the you fold. Need, you, you, you'll always need interest. You'll need like people who are willing to throw money at interesting projects, even if they are, if the, even if the, all of those people are tech enthusiasts, like you need people to come in and adoption and, yeah, and, and as many forms as you can. The, the focus, and I, I agree, the focus should be infrastructure scale, et cetera. That's where the focus should be. But like, you still need to like try and solve all the other problems simultaneously, just not, that shouldn't be the main focus. Because you can't just like, you can. who are you building infrastructure for if there's no users? I don't know. Ask China. They literally build highways with no people living there, just in the hopes that one day it gets out there. And hey, it's like, hey, it's a good thing we built this highway. I don't think that's how they do it. <laughs> but dude, there's like whole giant cities in mainland China that are just empty, and they're like, yeah, they're like, we'll we'll get there someday. Like, yeah, they're built. Like, we're gonna put people in them, but not anytime soon. We got about ten more years of fucking left to do before those cities, <laughs> before those cities get people in them. I would like some sourcing on that one. Okay, let me send me a source. 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 The empty Chinese cities. No, no uh, in the meantime, uh, uh, the interview is pretty long, so why don't we why don't we go into it and um, and me and you can talk about empty Chinese cities afterwards. Or if 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 the audience knows about this type of stuff, hop in the Slack and inform yeah, they're, both they're me and D cities. who's right about this type of stuff. They're, they're called ghost cities. It's like China like, occupied developments in China. They use it to stimulate their economy. It's China does a lot of China cheats. Okay. China's government cheats at a lot of things. They use this to stimulate their economy and build a bunch of giant cities. And they say they're going to stick people there, but then they never do. So basically people funnel funds into their economy, thinking they're going to get an ROI on them doing all this construction work and building all this stuff and nothing ever happens from it. So they end up taking everyone's money and paying them back in Chinese money, and then debasing their currency so they pay them back with air. Nobody likes China. Nobody likes how they operate. <laughs> throwing it's pretty throwing bangers game. out there today, T. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pretty, that's just what they do. Like, I don't understand. It's just, it's, it's not, it's not, I'm not saying Chinese people are a bad people. The Chinese government is categorically bad. They pollute more than anyone. They lie about their economy. They've lied about coronavirus. Like they do really bad shit and nobody can really hold them accountable. But welcome to the Bitcoin podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, <laughs> we're going to cut it. We're going to cut this shit to the interview and I hope I'm not assassinated by this time next week. There we go. <laughs> uh, here it is. Hey guys, got another there podcast inner four interview for you today uh yeah inner four uh so today we're going to talk about wasabi wallet like uh like the p i guess we're going to maybe why that's called that but 
Uh, we've got Lucas and David with us with the Savvy Wallet team. Um, why don't you all do the normal thing? Give us a quick introduction as to kind of who you are, what you do, and how you got um, kind of introduced into this, this this industry. Yes, thank you for having me here. Uh, I'm David Monar. I'm a software engineer, and currently I'm working for Wasabi Wallet uh, as a CTO. But uh, yeah, basically I'm I'm coding a lot and coordinating the things and the features what will get into the wallet. Nice. Very nice. How about you, Lucas? Break us off. Hi, well, I'm Lucas. I'm a lead developer of Wasabi Wallet. Um, I'm a software engineer too, and started uh, building the Wasabi Wallet with Adam Fixor. Uh, since the beginning, basically. Uh, and well, that's all. <laughs> I'm coding a lot too. No. Uh, I guess my first question is going to have to be why the name Wasabi and how spicy are you? Like, I need to know well, where'd you come up with that name? I like it. But that's because I like Wasabi. But I don't think it's related. So hook me up. Uh, uh, go on, Lucas. You you might be better. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, the uh, initially uh, Wasabi started with the uh, hidden wallet. That is a really bad name because you know it's something uh, dark there. So uh, the name was not okay. So we changed that to the magical crypto wallet. Where is because basically we didn't find any any name worse than that so <laughs> was the idea. and finally we say okay no why uh adam likes a lot this um culture from the the the, the japanese culture the chinese culture so what about a wasabi wallet well it was okay uh, in fact, it was Wallet Wasabi at the beginning. It's, it's ugly too, but now everybody finally found the, 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 the best name that is just Wasabi. I, I, I like Wasabi. <laughs> so. so it's just for alliteration's sake? Because if so, that's, that's powerful, and I commend you. Sure? Yes, and it's, uh, it's an it's PC. It's an SPC wallet, basically. That's another way to to put it. Yeah. So, like, before we start, I wanted. I have a bunch of, I guess, more technical things. But uh, like, first off, I gotta say, y'all's wallet is probably the best wallet in all of, in all of Bitcoin, based on being able to introduce advanced features into the wallet and a lot of control and still usability. So, hats off to that. Um, you want to give a quick intro, um, David, on like what Wasabi Wallet is and kind of what the whole um, shtick behind it is? Yeah, sure. Just a few words back to the naming that uh, it is, I, as far as I know, it is Wasabi because people likes to eat and it is a good marketing if you name your product uh, about, about food. <laughs> <laughs> that was I'm another sure. reason. You already you sold D, uh, so I guess that works. Yeah, there is making a making fried chicken wallet tomorrow. You guys are done. It's a wrap. Yeah, or, or, <laughs> no, or, 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 for example, bread bread wallet, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, shit. I didn't even think about that. That's slick, Mahoney. I like that. Hmm. Okay. Uh, so about wasabi. So you mentioned that probably that is one of the most powerful wallet. Yes. Uh, on desktop. So basically it's a desktop wallet. So yes, I guess it's, it's one of the best wallet right now. If you are, you are thinking in desktop, it's a cross platform. So you can install on Linux, Macintosh and Windows too. And the most important feature is, is privacy in the wallet. So it will try to use the best and uh, the, the most edge 
privacy technologies uh, during you create and transactions and for every other stuff. And the second most important thing is that it's very easy to use. So just to mention one, for example, if you want to have a full node, you just press a button there to turn it on. And there you go, without doing anything else. Or just to mention another one, to use the Tor anonymity network, you do not have to do anything. It is on by default in the wallet. So mm -hmm. briefly, briefly, those two are the main functions, the main concerns there. There's a lot of like functionality in there that do you feel like you're appropriately poised to handle what could be considered an onslaught of like new users? Or are you just touting very proudly that if you're new to this whole crypto thing, you probably shouldn't be messing around with our wallet. Just, just, just go to Coinbase or something. Mm, sorry, what, what do you mean? What I mean by that is, my name is Jessica, Jessica Rabbit. I'm walking around on the street. I just hear about Bitcoin. Am I gonna need Tor? Am I gonna need these advanced features? These things that very are very. Um, intimate with like early adopters, um, privacy minded people, but is Jessica Rabbit who basically just cares about, I don't know if her cafe has cream on the top or not. I'm very, I'm generalizing a whole group of people. I'm sorry, Jessica's out there, but is this going to appeal to Jessica? God damn it. Yeah, I understand the question. Uh, Probably not. Jessica won't use Wasabi Wallet <laughs> because, Sorry, she, because she, she has a, an iPhone only and we are not supporting mobile. <laughs> but Simple explanation. Uh, we are not spending any on marketing. Instead, we are uh, spending time and money and uh, brain power on educating people how to how to be private in bitcoin so for example we have a very good site docs.wasabiwallet.io which is maintained by max hillebrand ricardo mazzutti and a few other very good guys and this become a, a lexicon if I can say so, it is growing, growing all the time, and there is a lot of info. There are a lot of information there, and also we try to be there on every conference, Bitcoin conference, and uh, speaking about privacy, fungibility, why it is very important to to take care about this, uh, and and you know when things happening like. You know, for example, the coin forensics companies and uh, or or somebody making an, another exit scam and, and people ch starting to think um, that Bitcoin it cannot be used in the same way that they are using their credit cards because it's a different thing. They have to take care of their own money. They have to take care of their own privacy because nobody else will protect it. For example, in banks, there is the, the privacy policy. So they will guarantee that uh, your privacy will be preserved at least against other people, right? But in Bitcoin, this is not guaranteed by anyone. And this is very important to, to know that, to educate the people that they have to take care about this. Otherwise, they will compromise themselves. Mm. It's too late for Jessica, Corey. <laughs> yeah, I, I, it's definitely, I mean, it's, it might be too late for Jessica. And I guess that's part of the problem of um, the technology as a whole. I mean, we have, 
I guess, middle solutions like custodial things and things like that, but they don't take advantage of any of the benefits that Bitcoin was created for in the first place. Um, the problem there is like, I guess I got two questions here and they kind of feed into each other. Um, one is it's really hard to make wallets um, that offer these types of services, especially in a easy way, because the technology is hard. Like, is that why most wallets don't have these features? Because you don't think they really understand how you should be using this stuff or even just have the capability of offering up the service. And two, like, even if you have a lot of wallets using services that, uh, like the, the more advanced services that Bitcoin and offer, how do you educate a larger group of audiences about all of those things, right? It's hard to teach people to care about this stuff when their intuition for taking advantage of their own secrets just doesn't exist. Okay. Uh, I want to answer the second question and almost also a bit the, the previous question too. Mm -hmm. Because I think our part are more or less the same, are yeah. about education and um, how different users value uh, privacy. Uh, wasabi is is a meme. It's a meme for for a goal. So um, yeah, we had some users. We love the users that say, "Hey, I love Wasabi because Wasabi is cool." But uh, yeah, I, I I like to hear that. But we we want to provide to help people providing the tools for um, achieving the, the privacy and you the only way you um, understand that you need wasabi if you if you need it is because you know about privacy you know how the technology works you understand the consequences of your of the, the way you operate in the system yeah, so because you cannot value th those things that you don't understand so the first goal for us is <sighs> educate people educate people because um, the the result is the in, in privacy for our users and, and other people that are not our users that also gain privacy um indirectly is with the tools, yes, but then the, with the knowledge first. Uh, so basically, that is why it, it's important for us to educate people with documentation, videos, these kinds of, of uh, uh, with people like you that help us to to spread the the word, right? And um, well, that's. That's why we're, we're so obsessed with education. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about our sponsor of the show this week, Status. And today I want to call out uh, the many listeners who are building dApps on Ethereum to tell you how to get your dApp in the hands of all the Status app users. Status app itself is a mobile web 3, lets you chat, browse, and transact. There's a lot of cool things about the Status app. Right now, let's talk about the Dapp Explorer. Status app uses DAP.PS, that's referred to as dApps as an on-ramp to use Ethereum dApps on mobile. Maybe you've heard about DeFi, want to check out KyberSwap or DeFi Zap. We'll get some S and T and F, load it up in your status wallet and use dap.ps, dap.ps to get DeFi on mobile. Take your decentralized permissionless finance with you. Already we're seeing tons of excitement around mobile dApps in Web3. If you've got a dApp, head to dap.ps, check it out, follow the instructions for staking and get your dApp ranked and featured or email stake at dap.ps for more information. What's really neat about the Status App Dapp Explorer is that it automatically creates a social channel for your dapp. So you've got a place where Status App users can find and use your dapp, but also you've got the built-in private and secure chat functionality to build a community, do Q&A, FAQ, support, or even meme building. What's that you say? You're not a dapp developer? Why not? Status has a suite of developer tools to get you started building, testing, and deploying Web3 dapps with Embark.io. You know, you see projects that raised a bunch of money in their ICO in 2017, and then nothing. Some crappy wallet, maybe some marketing partnerships, but Status is shipping consumer products, dev tools, and fixing Ethereum and basic peer-to-peer -peer networking and communication protocols. The team is legit. I'm on it. Decentralized and open source. Check out everything they're up to at thestatusnetwork.com or start with the Status app at statusim.com.
slash git. That's status.im slash G-E-T. Back to the show. Before you move on to that next one, I'm going to say I was looking at your, your doc site um, the other day, and you have like a like a belt system associated with it. After you, you answer, go into like what that is. I want to know what this belt system is. Just a few words uh, to the previous question, which was uh, why they we use uh, or the Wasabi wallet. Uh, now we are getting to a level as far as I, I've, as my intuition says that uh, people just, like Lucas said, I heard about Wasabi, I heard about coin joining is a good thing, I want to have uh, preserve my privacy, and and basically that's it, because Wasabi is so easy to use, he or she just have the software and use it, and they don't need to care about the technology, how it is working, why, why it is like that. They just install the wallet, and because they he heard about Wasabi, that it is very private and it is good for your privacy, they just use it and that's it. And because, because when the word privacy uh, rings the bell, then somebody will say, well, okay, use Wasabi wallet, or yeah, and that's it. Mm. So I guess to touch on the, like uh, that education tip, I like that it's a, like a, it's a tenet of, of how you do business is educating the end user on why it's valuable to use the Wasabi wallet. Um, what, I mean, what, I guess what would be the MO What's the main thing in that education that you're trying to get across to these end users? Okay, the team is very diverse and we have among us people who is more focused on the um, economic uh, impact of the technology mm. and other about the, the technology itself, um, other with the privacy, our like Adam, for example, is focused one hundred percent on privacy. What is okay? What, is, what makes sense, right? Um, mm -hmm. But I think uh, people need to understand first. It, this is a personal opinion. Need to understand first what Bitcoin is, how Bitcoin can help you in a daily basis, and then how technology works, and finally. Uh, what, how the, the technology design, the system design has privacy implications and how you can mitigate those um, potential risks, if you, if you want, uh, mm -hmm. or protect your privacy with uh, this tool that is Wasabi Wallet. Uh, but, uh, but again, if you ask another team of, another member of the team, probably the answer is completely different. Mm. Okay, I can dig it. By the way, the documentation site was built uh, with WooPress. Of WooPress? Is... Yes, WooPress. WooPress, which is a very interesting tool because I, <clears throat> I attached the link there. The source of that site is on GitHub. And every time when you are uh, making change in in the source code, it is automatically built and updated. So, for example, if you find a typo in the documentation, you can go to GitHub, make a pull request, and become a contributor. So, I I would mot motivate you to do that. Uh, because there is a contribution game uh, going on from month to month on, on the Wasabi docs. So you, you can actually earn Bitcoin by uh, fixing typos or adding relevant content to the documentation. Uh, so so if your pull request merged, then the website automatically updates itself. It's It's very, very good. Oh, so that's what the belt system is in terms of like who's contributing. 
Yes, uh, basically, yes. Uh, the Wasabi documentation handled by Max Hillebrand, and he is the one who summarizes every month how much line uh, added and deleted by who, and a specific amount of Bitcoin uh, sp spread uh, to those people. So yeah, uh, yeah, it's it's uh, the bad system is another thing. It is related in a way that if you contribute uh, to Wasabi Wallet in some way, for example, with a tutorial video, and it is a very, very good video, then we will give you a white belt or something like that. All right, so you got a bounty. Yeah, that's pretty sweet. Uh, so I, I wanna I wanna ask a few more, I wanna ask more of like uh, some technical questions here before we, you know spend too much time on the belt system, but although it's awesome. And I, I definitely recommend people go and check it out and contribute because quality resources of advanced topics and, um, handling this type of stuff are, are few and far between, but, um, Wasabi is the only implementation of coin joint. And for those that don't know, um, coin joint is a, um, Bitcoin transaction privacy technology and allows you, uh, allows you to obfuscate, um, kind of the amounts being sent, um, and, and attribution from who's sending them and receiving them. Um, how, why are you the only implementation and do you feel like there's uh, like an, almost an undue burden on Wasabi Wallet because you're the only implementation of something so private as CoinJoin? Well, I, I think there are more implementation of CoinJoin. No one's using it for than, a, than Wasabi Wallet. What What is the, the biggest thing here is that we are implementing trustless coin join, which means that mm -hmm. even we cannot de-anonymize you later because we don't know nothing about you. And, I do that. and we, we cannot steal your money because there is no single point of time when we own your coin. Basically, it works in the following way, just a very basic form. Uh, 100 participants gather together and it is coordinated by the backend, Wasabi backend. Wasabi backend start constructing the, the coin join transaction and it is sent one by one for every client. And on client side, they are verifying if the transaction is correct. For example, uh, I send you query the transaction for your Wasabi client and the client will check, okay, my input address is there. Okay, it's there. My output address is there. Okay, it's there. Uh, my change address is there, right? Okay, checking the amounts, subtracting the fees. So it is really verifying that you will not get scammed your client. And if it is correct, it will send back your signature for that coin join transaction to the backend. So the backend will add your signature to the transaction. Even if the backend changing something on the transaction, your uh, signature won't be valid anymore. So, so basically what the backend can do is to, 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 not, to dis not broadcast the coin join and, and that's it. But nothing else we cannot steal we cannot de-anonymize you we cannot provide information to anyone about uh, the coin join because we don't know it either so that's the big deal that it is a trustless coin join mm. we, we even don't have your your xpub key so we, we we don't know your your balance we don't we know nothing mm. that's that's the point and to implement this in a way that it even cannot be DOS attacked. That's even no more harder. Yeah, but Lucas, Lucas can say more about this because he was one of the the main uh, participant at that time who who was implemented this. Um, no, but basically, the, the, I think the, the idea is, is clear. Um, the service of CoinJoin is, works 
in that way. But I want to take the opportunity to answer a previous question, more or less related, about the, the complexity of the wallet. Mm -hmm. um, I think the today the, the, the mm, developing a wallet is a bit harder probably than before. And um, especially now, uh, this kind of, of wallets like Wasabi Wallet that doesn't um, trust on any third party uh, server because the wallet has to be uh, capable of uh, calculating your balance and discovering your transactions directly from the blockchain without having the blockchain. So, it, 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 and not only that, um, uh, Wasabi requests blocks from the peer-to-peer -peer, uh, Bitcoin network based on uh, what we call a client filter that are like a summary of the addresses contained in every block. So Wasabi checks the, the compact filters if the compact filter that we are checking uh, says yes we have a, a, a an address here we then request the block to the peer-to-peer -peer network and parse the block and, and analyze or process the transactions in that block so uh, it is an from the technical point of view not from the user point of view but from the developer's point of view it's a complex um, wallet, yes, because uh, we cannot trust on on anyone. In fact, we cannot trust on the third-party nodes, and that's why we have implemented a lot of uh, checks and validations. And now we are switching to to make Wasabi work with your own uh, local Bitcoin node. That it that is the best from the, yeah. mm, not from the privacy point of view, because it, Wasabi provides a very high level of privacy. But yes, the, the good part is that now you don't need to trust on a third party node. You have your own node, and so you are sure the, the transactions that you are receiving and processing are, are valid, right? Uh, so yeah, I think it's, it's more complex. Okay. Yes, Lucas. Lucas got the point. Just I want to uh, make a very quick example. For example, uh, about client side filtering. I think that was a very very big idea there. Uh, okay. So you have a light wallet, right? Wasabi. We can say Wasabi is a light wallet because it consumes three hundred or four hundred megabytes on your computer. So. It not ha not having the the blockchain on your hard disk. So what's the what's the idea? Usually client side, uh, I mean light wallets, just asking a third party server, okay, give me my balance, right? And the third party server has the blockchain data and calculates everything. What's the problem with that? The problem is that they know everything about you, right? So. So they can they can leak the the data or get hacked or or whatever. If you know the data, then this can happen, right? So it's better to not know it. Okay, what's the second thing? The second thing is when you are asking random nodes, okay, what is my balance? But if that node, and we know that there are a lot of nodes which is controlled by by uh, surveillance companies and this kind of stuff so if you bump into that node and asking okay what's what's the balance on this address and what's the balance on that address and what's the balance on those address so they can they can collect this data together and figure out your wallet cluster so that's not mm -hmm. good either so what can you do with client side filtering you are not Wasabi is not asking for a specific address, but it can determine which block contains your transaction. 
So instead of getting the balance of a specific address, it will query the whole block which contains your transaction. So the node will only know that one of those transactions, which was the, on that block, in that block, is yours. But you know, every block contains 2,000 or 3,000 transactions, so that's not a big information there. So that's the fantastic idea with client-side filtering, that, that you can have a light wallet uh, feeling without compromising your privacy. Yeah, I mean, I can't, I can't stress this enough when it comes to um, the pro like proliferation of using third-party services for um, incredibly private things. Like an analogy that like I kind of want to say is like, imagine if like I was doing a bunch of things that um, I was concerned with my privacy about. And I do them all in my home and I get it all wrapped up in this nice little package. And sex then, stuff. Sure. Yeah. Sex stuff. That's what, I'm, that's what we're doing. I'm doing a whole bunch of sex stuff. Okay. Right. And I, want, I don't want to tell people about this. I just want to do it myself. I want to keep it myself and then go about my business and no one has to know. Right. No one needs to know. Everybody is doing that. Yeah. 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 So he <laughs> knows. Okay. Everyone's, everyone's doing it. But like, if I, if I, were, if I feel ashamed, I don't want to like, tell people about it i just keep it to myself and so imagine i i i built this awesome sex dungeon in my house which i'm gonna keep going with this analogy and it's everything everything that's this weird sex stuff stays in the sex dungeon it never leaves right uh but imagine if i built this awesome thing but the only way that i could perform things is i had to go to my neighbor and tell him what i want to go do and he's like it defeats the purpose of building the sex dungeon. I've spent all this work and money building this thing that allows me to be private. And then in the process of doing it, I have to go to my neighbor and tell them about it. That's what it's like mm. when you call third-party APIs for most of the time is that I do all this cool shit to maintain a specific amount of privacy or security. And then I throw it away when I do this other thing that's convenient. Mm. What if you like to humble brag though? Like, I mean, like then, 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 like... use, then use Coinbase. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I want my neighbor to know every time I'm going to the dungeon. <laughs> All right. I want him to be jealous of my life. No, I'm kidding. Um, yes. That's a great analogy, Corey. And that's basically what it's like. Use the services like Coinbase. So it's like you basically, exactly like you said, there's no privacy there. I have a couple questions though. Just, just, um, a, just, a, just a moment. Uh, so, yes, you are right. Basically, privacy is not about hiding things. It is about that you have the right to share the information what you want voluntarily. Mm -hmm. But if you don't want, you you have the right to. It's not about hiding. It's about protecting your right to have your own uh, stuff behind behind the wall right it's it's like the the door in your on your house right you you can you can invite people you can open it if you want but if you want you can close it yeah yeah even vampires understand that to be invited in so governments need to get with the fucking program but anyways um um, I got a question, right? But what? It, speaking of governments, and uh, what if I'm a government and you know I don't like Wasabi Wallet? I don't like what you guys are about. If I go and I shut down Wasabi Wallet with my guns, is that going to harm your end users? I'm assuming no, because you, like you said, Coin Join isn't something that you guys own. It's something that you guys do, but what would happen to everyone who relies on Wasabi Wallet right now to to uh, use their crypto? Yeah, let, let me answer this question. And I'm sure Lucas has some words too about this. So Wasabi is a non-custodial wallet, meaning that you, you have your private key in your pocket. So even if they're closing us, the first thing is that 
you can recover your wallet anytime, for example, in Electrum, and you get back the control. Mm -hmm. uh, another thing is that I think if you shut down the whole server, then you still can make a transaction from from Wasabi, but because of the client side filtering, you won't get the filters. So your mm -hmm. wallet status won't be updated, but you can create the transaction and, and broadcast to, to a node. So I think it, it would partially working still, but anyway, if you have the, the recovery words and you will get it when you are generating a wallet in Wasabi, you, you will be noticed that to write down those words and in Electrum, you can recover your wallet and keep going. The second thing is that Wasabi is open source. So anytime, if we are out of business or, or whatever, something happened to us, then anyone can, can take, can clone the repository. And this is also true for now. You, you can clone the repository and say, okay, here is my, let's say, not Wasabi, but I don't know, Shitake, <laughs> Shitake wallet. <laughs> and, and there you go, and my service is better and use this. You can do that. We, we cannot do anything against that because we are completely open source. So you can clone, you can verify the code, mm. and, and that's it. Nice. Lucas, you want to add to that? No, basically, I agree with 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 David. Uh, there is an, a strong incentive if we um, are out of the business for some reason. There is a strong, really strong incentive or incentive. Sorry for for people to start um, to host a Wasabi Wallet coordinator and start receiving feeds. Uh, the only thing that you have to say is convince enough users to go to the config file and replace the old URL by your own URL so people will start using your own hosted uh, Wasabi wallet. So, uh, in fact, I think it could be it could be a very, very bad idea to, sh to, to shut down uh, Wasabi wallet because that could result in multiple more um, hidden Wasabi mm -hmm. wallets. I mean, we everybody knows where we are, right? Uh, yeah. Because it's a company, but uh, Wasabi wallet is designed to work against uh, uh, a Tor hiding service. So uh, it could result in a proliferation of many other uh, Wasabi wallets uh, or at least uh, uh, coordinators, yes. So I think it's a bad idea. I got two lightning questions, Corey, and then I'll pass you the rock. <laughs> you know I'm waiting. <laughs> okay. Are you guys familiar with lightning rounds, like like for from game shows? Like, yes, yeah, so I'll ask a question, and you can basically just say yes or no to like a lightning answer, lightning quick answer. Sorry, familiar okay. with what? All right. I'm going to ask a question, but you you can only answer yes or no. It's like a lightning round. That's what we have in our game shows. It's like you can only answer yes or no. Okay. All right. If you guys were to start manufacturing out of the box full Bitcoin nodes, would you call them bento boxes? Uh, no. <laughs> All right. Next question. If you did decide to make a light wallet for the mobile, would you call it Hibachi Shrimp Wallet? Lucas, this is your... No. Okay. All right. On to you, Corey. It's All right. On to you. D is no longer the marketer for Wasabi Wallet. You can see that's going to happen. <laughs> uh, yeah, I got a, I got a couple I more. Uh, I guess the obvious one, um, and I kind of know the answer here, but it's it's. I want to hear your perspective on it, considering I make a private and secure wallet <laughs> on Ethereum. Uh, why not mobile? Why don't you have a mobile implementation? What's the problem here? Can't call it a bocce shrimp. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, okay. Uh, the, the problem with uh, mobile, 
uh, in Anguasabi is that you cannot guarantee the same level of privacy that we have now, right? Because, for example, Wasabi Wallet is a light wallet, but that requires to download blocks. Yes, so in my computer I have, I don't know how, probably a couple of gigabytes of blocks. And uh, that's a bit harder. Uh, I mean, you can download blocks in mobile, but it's, uh, the, the bandwidth is a lot. I'm gonna tell also, you, you have, I'm gonna tell you from experience, it'll burn your battery <laughs> and your bandwidth if you have a data oh, plan. Wow. Of course, but it's not only the blocks in that case. What will do that is that we need to listen the 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 network, the peer-to-peer -peer network, in order to be notified when we receive transaction. For example, we keep a, a mempool, right? Uh, also, we have to download the blocks, these compact blocks filters. Yes, uh, Tor. Uh, I don't know if Tor is, a, is an issue anymore, but I think it's, Tor is it's possible. It's not fun. Anyway. Let's put it that way. It's not fun to use Tor on mobile. <laughs> okay, so the, basically that's the problem. Uh, uh, of course, what we can do is move all the logic, all the hard part, all the uh, heavy bandwidth um, process uh, outside uh, to a server so you can connect to the server. But in that case, what you are doing is having an, an interface in your mobile phone, and you need to connect to that server that is in your in your place, right? But it is not so easy. Of course, if you have, for example, if you can um, use a central server, and the central server can do uh, calculate your balance, and you trust on that server, uh, in that case, it, it could be much much easier but that's something we don't want to do right now <laughs> or i don't know we don't want to do that right now and we don't want to do that in the future neither yes exactly on the other hand one more thing that beside what lucas mentioned that xiaomi we are using xiaomi and coin join it is snorri and coin join but it doesn't matter. So the coin join, what we are doing now is, is an interactive coin join, meaning that you have to be there and signal for the backend that, Hey, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here and doing this all the time because we don't know when a coin join will happen, right? Because we have to wait until we have 100 participants online. And then a coin join will happen, but this is totally depends on the user activity. So your device have to be online, listen and answer every time. And when the coin join will start to proceed, then you have to wait until you get the unsigned coin join and sign it in that, in that very moment. So it is not possible to, to have a mobile phone, which is went to sleep or, or out of the range or whatever, you know, shut down by, because of the power saving, it shuts, shuts down the, the Wasabi application or, or something like this. So it's, it's not so reliable. And here I would like to mention that uh, we are looking for the next a big thing in privacy. We have a thing which is called Wasabi Research Club. Uh, Lucas, for example, is one uh, main participant there. And we have Aviv Milner, who's a privacy professional. He is the host of this one. And Adam Fitcher, of course, the, the inventor of uh, Wasabi Wallet. And they are going through every privacy technique and looking for the next one to have a better uh, coin join or whatever will be it is. So yeah, this is a small advertisement that it's also open because we like to be transparent so anyone can join and uh, you can find it in our repository, ZK's next repository under Wasabi Research Club. So everyone is welcomed there. I'll be sure to add those to the um, 
show notes in case anyone's interested. I'm personally interested as I've spent most of my time researching and trying to develop this type of stuff. So if it's things that I can learn in terms of technology associated with crypto that increases privacy and efficiency, then I'm, I'm, I'm all for it. Um, I guess the next question, like I'm a, I'm a security engineer. I, I wonder, um, how do you give specific guarantees within the software? How are you doing like threat modeling? Are you getting like external audits to on, on this code base? Or are you just kind of assuming because it's worked so far that it works or, you know, code is self-documenting, things like that. Like, how are you, what, what's the security profile of, of such a wallet so focused on privacy and security? Okay. So, uh, yeah, I'm sure Lucas has some words about this too. So for example, uh, we are doing a lot of research and we are not putting into, not putting any feature which has a minimal amount of privacy risk in any side into the software. That's why uh, there is a lot of issue there if you check our repository because, <laughs> you know, you think there is a good idea to, I don't know, whatever to, to, to put a link there when you are clicking on a transaction uh, hash and okay, how, how about that the user can click on it and, you know, go to SmartBit and, and check the transaction there. And why are you not doing this? Because it's with, with so, so easy to click on that link and the browser pops up and there you go, your block explorer is there, right? It's, it's, a, it's a good feature. But we are not allowing these kind of features because this means that uh, from that computer you will open a website on the clear net, which is obviously not a good private privacy uh, deal. So yeah, we are we are discussing these kind of feature requests uh, among the team, and the conversation is open because the repository is open. So we have a lot of contributors and, and, and they are really, really watching th those things and uh, they, they are not letting and, and we neither letting these features to get into the software. Also, we have a very strict uh, code review policy and contributing policy. So yeah, you, you can open issues there. You have, can have IDs you can start discussions, but if your preacher has privacy concerns, then it, it probably it will be denied. Lucas, do you agree? Yes, that's basically, it's an open source project. Uh, we have received uh, multiple reviews from very well-known people in the community. In fact, uh, I remember two reports of ways to manipulate the fees in order to uh, fool the clients, <laughs> in order to sign a transaction that could be not valid, and we fix that, and multiple others. Uh, for example, in the in what the cryptography about the cryptography, for example, we implemented the Schnorr blinding signatures and. Well, uh, Jonas Nick uh, gave us a hand with that because he said, hey, listen, if you implement this in this way, uh, be careful because it could be a possible attack, a uh, Wagner attack, if you reuse the same uh, uh, key for a signer, for example. So we have to uh, implement uh, uh, changes in our protocol in order to never reuse any key. I mean, every time we sign something, uh, I mean, all the keys are disposable, only one uses. Uh, I mean, all the keys that uh, are for uh, signing a uh, blinded message, for example. Um, what else? Also, the people 
was reviewing the the random number uh, technology that is using I, I mean we don't use it directly but we use the and bitcoin and, and bitcoin use uh, the microsoft uh, .net uh, so we went down all the path to uh, .net and how it generates the key, the random number, sorry. I'm sorry. For the different platforms. <laughs> and so it is, it's, so it's, um, yeah, the, 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 there are a lot of eyes looking at uh, Wasabi, Wasabi Wallet. Uh, that's our policy. And of course, if someone uh, finds something, uh, what um, the company CK Snacks, uh, used to reward uh, uh, people who help us with all kind of of issues oh great so there's bounties associated yes. with disclosing disclosing bugs that's nice to hear yes exactly yes of course yeah uh, that was the belt program i thought no that's just that that's just part of like contributing to the uh, documentation center of like education uh, okay Sorry, well, yeah, that is the that is what uh, is um, written, right? So you know that if you write help with documentation, you will be paid, right? But if you if you find a, a bug or if you find a critical issue or security issue, which will be paid paid by sure, because that's that's the idea, right? It's the only way we. In fact, we know that we don't know all the things. So we, we appreciate help always. Yes, exactly. As, as far as I can remember, we are there for, for almost one and a half year, right? The, mm -hmm. the, the 1.0 version. And as far as I can remember, there was only one case when we had to, have to had to pay back, have to uh, refund one user because accidentally the coordinator taken his money. There was a very very specific case. What he did is to run multiple instances of Wasabi wallet on the same computer with the same wallet. Mm. So he made a very specific. This is not 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 a, a standard use case, <laughs> so we was not prepared for that, and uh, there was a very very bad timing there. And accidentally, the coordinator taken one of his coins. So at the end, we figured out this thing. I also wrote a medium article about that, but we refunded him. But since then, we fix, fix the bug, bug, of course, and uh, uh, put warnings to not running this more instances on the same wallet, on the same computer, in the same time, and start going joining. You know, this is the don't put the cat in the microwave uh, accident. Yeah. <laughs> Why are you doing this? <laughs> don't, we have, now we have to explicitly tell you not to do this. You shouldn't be doing it in the first yeah. place. <laughs> but since since then we we didn't have to we haven't uh, had to do any these kind of things. Uh, we usually solve the problem on on GitHub and Reddit or on Telegram. And and back to the the security model, I would like to show you something. For example, we have this. Wasabi is is built on zero link, zero link is a Bitcoin fungibility framework. And there is a very good research paper uh, written by Adam Fitchor, Nopara73. And for example, if you go there and look at that paper, we have special thanks for Adam Gibson, Chris Belcher, Ethan Hillman, Dan Gershoni, Christoph Atlas, and, and, and those big or for example, we got the coin join bounty, which meaning that Gregory Maxwell, uh, Peter Willey, and I think yes, Adam Gibson approved our software as a, a trustless coin join implementation 
in in the space and the other who was get some uh, amount of the bounty was join market uh here it's adam gibson's and chris Batcher's uh uh product or or child or yeah, <laughs> uh, brain <software>. child <laughs> yeah so yeah as as lucas mentioned we we got verified and we have a very good community around us very professional community so yeah this this is the fair the safe net under <laughs> under us that's awesome that's good it's incredible to have is. such a such a um great set of minds to help you build out um software and infrastructure like it's mm -hmm. that's, that's a rare thing so congratulations on that thank you yeah, man. that's good you you need a you need a rare mind as a marketer to help you no i'm kidding um let's do one last thing in 10 words or less can you both describe bitcoin You each get 10 words, by the way. You don't have to share the 10. <laughs> Describe Bitcoin in 10 words. Yeah, or, or less. less. Lucas, you can start. <laughs> uh, free market money. Oh, you put three. Free Good luck. Money. Good luck, David. Is that flea market money free. or free market? Free market. Or flea market money. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Flea, free market money. Okay. Yeah, free market money. Your turn, David. But three words is kind of short. I don't know. Decentralized trust. Oh, checkmate, oh, sir. You just got one up. Because <laughs> that's what we call one up. Okay, one. Yeah. All right, guys. Free well, market uh, money. Yeah, uh, free market money. Decentralized trust, both outstanding answers. Um, so how do people get a hold of you? Where do I reach out? Um, where's What's the website? Um, let them know. Yeah, the main website is wasabiwallet.io, where you can download the software, get some basic information, and probably some links to our other site, for example, our GitHub repository or the Twitter. Uh, on the Twitter, we are posting the new features and uh, with the next release, we will have many, many very good features. For example, uh, multi-wallet support, which means that you can uh, open more wallet in one instance and you can coin join into another wallet, for example, into your cold card when you reach the specific anonymity set with the next coin join wasabi will automatically uh, automatically uh, put the code the the your your other wallet output address there so it will be it will be automatically sent within the coin join to another wallet okay that was just a teaser there because now it is only in the daemon mode but soon, sooner or later, it will get into the UI too. So yes, so Twitter, uh, Reddit, we have a Reddit site, and Telegram. Did I forget oh. something, Lucas? No, that in Telegram, they can find us or one of our impersonators. <laughs> there are many, so be careful <laughs> in Telegram. Good deal. Yeah, well, thank you guys more. for. Oh, you still you yeah. got another one? Yeah, just one more thing that we have a lot of contribution game. So I really would like to invite uh, anyone to contribute because, for example, now we have an art game. Anyone who produce some art uh, related to Wasabi Wallet will get some sets. 10 million sets will be satoshis will be distributed during this game so i would like to incentive the people with art uh, skills to contribute on this game mm -hmm. and the other thing is that uh, many many 
uh, Wasabi team member was uh, hired after contribution game. So if you want to, to become the team member, then come contribute and probably you will you will get into the team so nice yeah well, come contribute david lucas thank you very much for swinging by the bitcoin podcast um and thank you for what you do i um, mean coin join is something that you guys can put your stake in i know you don't want to say that but most people if they're using coin join it's because of you guys so hats off to you um yeah thank you for coming by we are appreciating that thank you for having me. Goodbye. Thank you for having us. Bye bye.